Coming up right now on SUTV News, we show you how one Shippensburg University Department's hard work has paid off. And we'll tell you about an unexpected showing at the local McDonald's. It's all right now. Coming back in 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Hello and thanks for joining us for another week of SUTV News. I'm Lance Kopp. And I'm Amanda Peterson. Shippensburg athletic teams aren't the only Red Raiders with big successes this year. The Communication Journalism Department learned on Wednesday they have been recommended to be included among big name communication programs worldwide. Trey Campbell explains. Communication Journalism Department and it makes one world of a difference. Accreditation is a, a voluntary process done by departments and programs in the field to, to demonstrate to outside experts the value of what they are teaching. It's kind of like the good housekeeping seal of approval. The accrediting visit team has recommended Shippensburg for full accreditation and the impact would be huge. It basically says, hey, I've gone to a school with, you know, the right curriculum, the right facilities, it has all the tools I need to be successful. The final decision won't come until the spring. And as the leaves continue to fall, students and faculty will wait and hope that Shippensburg will be fully accredited. Trey Kemble, SUTV News. The final approval comes with a vote by the accrediting body's council made up of educators and mass communications professionals. While Shippensburg police are looking for a man who ordered fast food at McDonald's, no, it wasn't the Hamburglar they were after. Instead, a man who was waiting in the drive-thru and passed the time in an unusual way. It ended up illegally. SUTV's Kyle Rogers joins us with the story. Kyle? Well, Amanda, since she was Shippensburg Police, been trying to find a man who went through the McDonald's drive-thru. There's no, nothing illegal about that. And after six months, police have charged 29-year-old Matthew Mitchell of Shippensburg because when he pulled up to the pickup window, what employees saw gave him quite the grimace. It makes for a quick dinner, stopping by the drive-thru to grab a bite to eat. But sometimes the wait doesn't make it feel like fast food. Shippensburg police say Mitchell ordered his meal and as he was waiting at the pickup window, he began exposing and touching his genitals. Three teenage employees and a manager at McDonald's saw him in the act. They gave him his food and he left. Later, Mitchell came back to the McDonald's because he said the cashier forgot to give him the rest of his order. And while waiting for the rest of his food, he again exposed himself. Mitchell faces several charges, including corruption of minors, indecent exposure, and open lewdness. Back to you guys. Thanks, Kyle. Well, a few weeks ago, we told you about talks of a potential strike of all state-owned university, university faculty. We've been following the story, and SUTV reporter Scott Clay joins us now with the latest. Scott? Thanks, guys. Members of the Association of Pennsylvania State, College, and Universities Faculties, also known as ABSCUF, have been working without contract for the past 16 months. This week, members of ABSCUF voted to authorize the strike. This week are getting a new definition to the word strike, as the faculty took a strike authorization vote. It is not uh, a, a vote to go on strike, it's just to use that, to provide that leverage for our negotiators. This year and last, faculty have continued to teach and work, while negotiators say they've made little progress. We feel like um, it has been... Uh, that the other side could have definitely have been more open and, and uh, that at times that they have definitely not presented fair offers. This week's vote doesn't mean there's going to be a strike. It's a vote that gives our negotiators at the table the power to authorize a strike or the power to call a strike. Most ship faculty voted, but how they voted hasn't been counted. We won't know uh, for, for at least a couple of days. Even if ship faculty all vote yes, the decision to authorize the strike is up to the faculty of all 14 state schools. It is a cumulative count. It's all of them counted together. It's all one union. It's all one vote. 
and the hope is that one vote is enough to finalize the contract and avoid the strike. We don't want a strike. We want a fair contract. I reached out to the Chancellor's office today and spoke with Ken Marshall, the PASHI spokesperson. He told me this is the fourth time ABSCA faculty have authorized a strike, and there's never been one. He says negotiations will continue on the bargaining table. The union and PASHI are set to meet again on December 11th. Coming up on SUTV News, we have a turkey bowl and glow stick party. But before the break, sports reporter Marcus Cooper has a special interview. In anticipation of this week's playoff game against Bloomsburg, Marcus is sitting down with cornerback Avery Coleman. Hey, hey Marcus. Marcus. You mind if I ask you a couple questions? Let me ask some questions. Okay, thanks, man. Appreciate it. What do you think the team could have done better collectively last week, whether it be offense, defense, special teams? I think as a whole, we could have brought more energy. Uh, we started out pretty good, at least on defense-wise, and... We thought we had a good game plan and everything, but then when something goes wrong, you got to keep your energy up. And they brought a lot of energy to the table in the game. It was a championship game. They were all jacked up and how we were ranked all high and everything. Mm -hmm. I think we needed to get our level up to match and beat theirs, and we didn't do a great job of that. Good point, man. Good point. Um, well, you have 137 tackles, 11 interceptions, and 25 pass breakups. Now, this is as a secondary completely. How does that contribute to a successful defense? Well, the whole, the whole defense works together as a whole, the D-line, the linebackers, safeties, corners. Uh, but it, we work better when the D-line gets a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. We've been doing good this year, getting lots of sacks and everything. The linebackers play in their spots and their coverages, and the D-line makes the quarterback throw quicker. The linebackers, they make the quarterback have to throw to a precise spot, mm -hmm. and the more precise of the angle they have to get it in there, the better it is for us and uh, making our reads and breaks on the ball. Definitely, man. Well, I appreciate your opinion, man. Thanks, Thanks for, for coming me. out. Well, it's that time of year again. The campus has Thanksgiving foods on their mind. Let's take a look at some of their favorites. Stuffing. Potatoes and gravy. Thank you. I like stuffing. Mashed potatoes. My gravy. Cranberry sauce. There's been a lot of national news this week. Kyle joins us once again. Hey, Kyle. Target employees aren't happy about working on Thanksgiving and a new song that will be stuck in your head. Here's your National Blitz. Right, killed the Hamas top military commander and eight others. The video shows the direct hit in Gaza. It was in response to rockets being fired on Israel from Gaza. President Obama spent the day in New Jersey today. He hugged the victims from Hurricane Sandy, shaking their hands and talking with residents hit hardest by the deadly storm. Target is opening at 9 on Thursday night, and while some customers are happy... I'll be here. <laughs> Definitely, I'll be here. Employees started an online petition. I believe I'm sending it for the greater good here. Almost 150,000 virtually signed a petition to say Thanksgiving for the family. And while Thanksgiving carols aren't too popular, this girl plans to change that. Nicole Westbrook's family moved to Minneapolis from California. It was there she was discovered by the same producer behind last year's internet hit, Friday by Rebecca Black. But this time, it's a song about a certain Thursday. And that'll be stuck in your head all Thanksgiving. You're welcome. Nicole Westbrook's YouTube sensation has already hit 5 million views. Now back to you. Put on your sneakers and sweatbands and get ready for a round of dodgeball. This Sunday, November 18th, help support the Alpha Phi Foundation's Turkey Bowl. The bowl supports cardiac care and prevention in women. The tournament begins at 2 at the Shipwreck Courts. Every team needs a $10 registration fee and 8 players to join. Registration packets are still available. Contact Megan Tyson at mt6672 at ship.edu for yours. Well, my favorite subject, shopping, is on everyone's mind. Thanksgiving is just a week away and Christmas in about a month. Money might be an issue right now, especially if you're a college student, but don't worry. Christmas for Causes, hosted by the Drew Michael Taylor Foundation, is Monday. The event is located at Premier Events on Orange Street from 6 to 9 p.m. Not only can you buy things for your loved ones, but you can help others out as well. The neat thing about Christmas for Causes, and the reason it's called that, is everybody that sets up and sells there donates a percentage of their profits to local charities. 
So you're getting your shopping done, but you're helping a local charity at the same time. For more information on this event, contact Marcy Taylor at 717-532-8922 or email Marcy at drewmichaeltaylor at pa.net. Homecoming is one of the biggest weeks at Shippensburg. Here's your chance to make next year's better than this year's. The Homecoming Board is challenging SHIP students to plan next year's homecoming. Submit any ideas to the CUB information desk or email to suhomecoming at ship.edu. It's time to pull out your neon and enjoy some entertainment. The LGBT organization is hosting their 16th annual drag show November 29th at 7 p.m. in the CUB NPR. Admission is $3 or you can pay $6 and get a t-shirt. Students are encouraged to bring dollar bills to tip the performers. Well, still to come on SUTV News, Emily Larson joins us with the weather. Find out what to expect for your Turkey Day travels. And the forecast for the big game. Again, we'll head over to Marcus Cooper, who now joins us with Tyree Kershaw. Hey, Marcus. Appreciate that. Um, let's get into it. As a leader on the field, do you think the defense played to its full potential last week? Not at all. Not at all. Um, we're a defense that thrives on intensity, you know, energy, being aggressive and, you know, just flying around to the ball. We, mm -hmm. did, we didn't do that at all Friday, I feel like, mm -hmm. you know. We made a lot of mental errors because we're, we're a disciplined defense, you know. When you're not the biggest defense, you got to play with more discipline. You got to play with speed. You got to fly to the ball. We, didn't, we did not do that well last Saturday. Um, we also didn't cause any turnovers that game. No fumbles, no interceptions, anything. And when, when interceptions and, and turnovers and fumbles and everything are such an important statistic, you need to cause those in the game to get your offense more opportunities. And we didn't do that last Saturday. We didn't recover from the first punch when they gave us on the first couple drives. And we, we have to. We, we have to recover. Like, we can't, we can't play back and expect to come back all the time against a defense and offense as good as IUPs, you know. They were in the PSAC championship for a reason, just like we were. So mm -hmm. we, couldn't, we couldn't take that lightly. I felt like we, didn't, we just didn't step off the bus like we usually do. Definitely, man. That's, that's good insight coming from a leader, man. Definitely. Um, speaking of interceptions, you have 137 tackles, 11 interceptions, and 25 pass breakups as collectively as a DB unit. How do you feel that contributes to such a successful defense? Because um, it's, it's a full collective, collective effort from all of us. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's so important to have turnovers for interceptions and, and fumbles. Like I said, you know, other than scoring points, causing turnovers is like the most important statistic on determining who's going to win the game. Mm -hmm. So um, when everyone's doing their job, D-lines causing pressures, the uh, linebackers are filling their gaps and then dropping back, covering their areas. You know, DBs are also running up for run, run support and filling their gaps when they got to drop back. Um, you know, it all just clicks perfectly and cause interceptions. We out there, we're having fun. We're having intensity and energy that we always love to bring. And it calls for a great time and great games and great records. Definitely, definitely. Um, looking to increase those stats on Saturday, right? Definitely. Good luck, my man. Definitely. Appreciate it. No problem. The last food's got my mouth watering. Let's see what else Shippensburg takes a bite out of on Thanksgiving. Definitely turkey. My mom was mashed potatoes. Oh, okay. uh, green bean casserole. Macaroni and cheese on my mom. Welcome back to SUTV News. Well, next week is going to be stuffed with some fun stuff. <laughs> Sorry. We have the game Saturday, Thanksgiving break starts Wednesday, and of course, Thanksgiving Thursday. <laughs> well, I'm sure Emily will appreciate your joke just as much as me. Let's go over to her with weather. Hey, Emily in the near future. For tonight, we'll be seeing a chilly low of about 36 degrees, not much different from the past few nights, with some light winds at about 4 miles per hour. And looking into tomorrow, we'll see partly cloudy skies and a high of 50, and at night, a below freezing 31 degrees. There isn't too much going on weather-wise for the next week, at least not compared to what we've seen in the last month. For your five-day forecast, as I said, the weather is going to be calm with temperatures in the 40s and 50s going into next week. So just some light wind and seasonal temperatures to bring you right into Thanksgiving. On Turkey Day in our area, we can expect a gorgeous sunny day with highs in the mid 50s. So thankfully, we won't be dealing with any rough weather. And that's it for weather this week. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Emily. Now let's go to Leah Yolan, who will show us where we can sing, laugh, and get our shop on right here at SHIP. Hey, Leah. Hey, guys. And hey all, the semester is winding down, but entertainment is still going strong. Don't forget to catch comedian Sinbad at the Lore Center tomorrow night at 8. 
and Sunday afternoon, the Community Orchestra Fall Concert starts at 3. Tickets can still be purchased at the Lore Center box office or at lorecenter.com. Tomorrow night must be Funny Friday because APB After Dark presents comedian Will Marfury at McFeely's Coffee, Coffee House. He's appeared on The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson, is a regular on XM Radio, and tours all over the world 50 weeks out of the year. Wow, now that's a hard-working comedian, and I hear he's super funny, so check Will out at Facebook.com slash Will Marfrey. Then come laugh your face off tomorrow night at McFeely's. Gut Bustin' starts at 9. All right, all you Gleeks, guess who's coming to the club NPR? Staying true to herself and her dreams, Glee Project star Emily Vasquez tells her story, and maybe she'll even give us a few chills with her phenomenal voice. So come one, come all. Wednesday, November 28th at 9 p.m. Admission is free for SHIP students, $5 for all other students with ID, and $10 for everyone else. For more information, visit clubs.ship.edu slash APB slash After Dark. Well, get a jump on your Christmas shopping. WTF is sponsoring a bus trip to New York City this Saturday. The bus leaves from SHIP at 6 a.m. sharp. Tickets can be purchased at the Cub Desk for $40 if you're an SU student, and all other tickets are $60. I've got about 50 bucks. Can someone bring me back a Louis Vuitton bag and a matching pair of red bottoms? Just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> Next Sunday in the Orndorff Theater, we've got a double header. At 6 p.m., catch Meryl Streep and Tommy Lee Jones in the mature comedy Hope Springs. It's the story of a 30-year marriage in need of a little spark and a whole lot of hope. Then get your adrenaline fix with Premium Rush, an action-packed flick filled with bike messengers, dirty cops, and a whole lot of stuff blowing up. My kind of movie. It's all next Sunday in the Orndorff Theater, just as we return from break. Yes, I said it. Next week is Thanksgiving break, and let me tell you, I am so thankful for that. I'm especially thankful that I will not be doing any of the cooking, but I will be doing much of the eating. Hey, I'm not ashamed. Hit me up and let me know what you're thankful for this season and some of your favorite Turkey Day vittles at facebook.com slash SUTV news or facebook.com slash Leah Yolan fan page. Hey, that's all I've got this week, folks. Wherever you are next week, I hope you have enough to eat until you're nearly sick, watch lots of football, and most of all, find a reason to be thankful for all you have. Until next time, that's what I call entertainment. So to come on SUTV News, we have more playoff coverage, and we'll highlight the rest of the Red Raiders sports world. Well, first, let's head over to Marcus Cooper, sports reporter, one last time as he sits down with James Cooper from the Red Raider football team. Hey, Marcus. How do you bounce back from that type of loss going into a game where you know the teams want revenge on you? Well, we already know that Boonsburg is going to come out hot, you know. They've been giving interviews all week about how they're guaranteed to win this game. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we, we got embarrassed last week. We can, you know, we can admit that. And, you know, the loss, we're looking at it as a good thing, you know, preparing us for the playoffs because hey, we're going to play some tough teams. And uh, we got a chip on our shoulder. You know, we moved down in the rankings. I believe Bloomsburg moved ahead of us after losing this past week. So, like, we feel that as, a, you know, a sign of disrespect. So I know Bloomsburg's gonna be hot and you know fired up, explosive. But uh, we you know we got we got a chip on our shoulder to play with with this week too. I hear that. That's a good point, man. Real mm -hmm. good point. Now you have 137 tackles, 11 interceptions, mm -hmm. and 25 pass breakups collectively collectively as a DB unit. How does that tie into such a successful defense? Well, as as a defense, you know we got to tackle. Mm -hmm. That's you know. That's number one. Mm -hmm. And uh, two, you know, everybody does their part. As, as we said before, you know, D-line does their thing. I believe D-line has two interceptions on the team, which, you know, isn't, isn't as common, <laughs> you know, in most football teams mm -hmm. for defensive linemen to get uh, interceptions. So, like, everybody does their part, you know, goes hard at the best that they can. Linebackers give them tons of credit. You know, we got responsible defense. And as long as everybody comes out explosive, hey, we get the job done. And as you can see, it, you know, results in wins. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely looking forward to hearing that Cooper legacy on the loudspeaker this definitely. Saturday, man. Thanks definitely. for coming out, man. Well, I'm glad this is the last set of favorite foods. I'm going to need to grab something from the food, from the club after this. Mashed potatoes with gravy. Macaroni and cheese. It's turkey and mashed potatoes. Sweet potato pie. Killing starts with us.
Uh, for the second time this Saturday at Seth Grove Stadium, Ship came away with a win in the first meeting between the two in a nail-biting fashion, all due to what some Shippensburg fans are calling the catch. Lance, you're going to walk us through one play and then another, but first, tell us what the Raiders need to do to defeat the Huskies again this weekend. Well, in the first game, we consider it a tale of two halves. Shippensburg won the first half 35-7, where Bloomsburg won the second half 35-14. Despite the valiant effort by Bloomsburg, Shippensburg was able to come away with a win for what you say is the catch. So, before I get into that, mm -hmm. I want to talk to you about another play we have here. It's a long, a long run by Franklin Quiete. It was the second play, as you can see the handoff here, it was the second play of the, first, of the second half, and he went all the way to the house for a 68-yard touchdown, touchdown. So, let's go back. Thanks to Coach Mack, we have some game film. And here, as you can see, unfortunately you can see they had a motion here which confused the defense and they weren't able to adjust for the run play which you see come to the right here everyone is man up excellent blocking by the Bloomsburg offensive line two great chop blocks here and you see this extra guy all the way over here who didn't even have to block anybody but he was downfield in case he had to make a block on Avery Coleman Franklin Quite is too fast and they didn't even need to but here's the play we've all been waiting for the catch you see Zach Zuli roll out to the right. See Brian Barley in the back of the end zone for the touchdown. An outstanding play, of course. Let's back it up and break this play down. We had uh, Shippensburg was lined up as if they were going to run the ball. They have Kevin Herod and Mike Frenette here in the backfield. So they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys loading up the box, preparing for one run. And they even had someone out here on the outside blitzing in, as you can see right there. Zuli came around to the outside. He saw it was man coverage. And before, you can see, before he was even open, Zuli was anticipating the throw. Was able to make an accurate throw. Barley was able to make an outstanding catch. I want to see it again. Let's, br let's bring it back. An outstanding catch by Brian Barley. Look at that. I can't that's how you, That's that. how you win a game. Look at, look at this form Picture right here. perfect. Outstanding. <laughs> outstanding and... You know, good for the team. It was a morale booster. It was the closest game mm -hmm. Coach Max ever coached. So um, with that being said, it's going to be a fun game this weekend. Well, thank you so much, Lance. Now let's go to Marcus Cooper for more on the big game and the rest of your Red Raider sports. Hey, Marcus. It sounds like it's going to be a great game, Amanda and Lance. Hopefully better than last week. Lindsey Barna has the highlights. Championship against IUP. We start off in the first quarter on IUP's first drive, results in a 48-yard field goal by IUP's Brett Allman, IUP 3-0. Still first quarter on the Crimson Hawks' second drive, DeAnton Williams with a 59-yard run for the touchdown. IUP up 10-0. Ship's first score is good for a 33-yard field goal from Mike Lloyd. Ship down 10-3, and the band excited about that field goal. 44 seconds left in the first quarter. IUP's Terrell Barnes takes the ball 48 yards down the field for a Crimson Hawk touchdown. IUP 17-3. Second quarter, Zuli scrambling in the pocket finds Trevor Harmon with a defender all over him and gets the touchdown. Ship trailing 2010. Ship would not score the rest of the game as the Crimson Hawk go on to defeat the Red Raiders for the PSAC Championship 41 10. Although the team was disappointed about the loss, they aren't letting that distract them this week. In case you haven't heard, playoffs are here. Ship earned home field advantage to take on the Bloomsburg Huskies. This is the first round of the NCAA Championship playoffs. Seth Grove Stadium will see a few changes now in the postseason. The interest fee for the game is 5 bucks for students and $10 for adults, unless you are one of the first 500 students with an appropriate school ID. In that case, your admission is free. The interest for the game by the high, is, on, is by the Highest Field House side of the field. The gates of the stadium will open at 10.30 a.m. and the parking lot will open at 9.30 a.m. Kickoff is at noon. Less than 48 hours until kickoff for the Red Raiders. The team and the Red Sea are preparing for fierce competition. Austin Schaefer has more. The football team's regular season is over. And this year it means playoffs. The Red Raiders take the field this weekend in the first round of the NCAA playoffs against a tough Bloomsburg team. 
a team looking for revenge. The Huskies lost a ship in the final four seconds of a regular season gridiron battle. It's, uh, it's a heck of a challenge against Bloomsburg, you know, we got to play them twice here. Um, but I think our guys understand uh, it's an important game and, uh, you know, they want to make a, the best that they can be this, this season. Coach Mack knows what it takes to win because he has done it all season. We're not changing what we've done the first 11 weeks. You know, we're going to stay with what we do as far as practice schedule and things like that. Uh, we have put some new things in and, and try to help ourselves on both sides of the ball and on special teams, you know, making adjustments, and hopefully those will pay off on Saturday. But the team isn't the only group prepared for the playoffs. The Red Sea is pushing for another sold-out crowd. We're really trying to make that one central unit with the band, the students, and, the, and families again like we did when Bloom came here last time. That really got not only students excited, but the football team as well. The fans cheering as one has brought a newfound excitement around Shippensburg and the Red Raider football team. This is the kind of atmosphere I wanted to be in, you know, and it took hundreds and hundreds of students to make this work and happen, but it is happening. And together, the fans and the team will hope to make this 2012 season last just a little bit longer. Austin Schaefer, SUTV Sports. Thanks, Austin. That's it for SUTV News. I'm Amanda Peterson. And I'm Lance Cobb. Don't touch that remote because Second Look is coming up next. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.